Hi, dear friends, some words of Torah for Parshat Shkalim, Parshat Vayakel 5784. Parsha Shkalim represents the beginning of an entire season of new beginnings, victories, and holy celebrations. This is why the Torah wishes for each Jew to donate exactly one half of a shekel, indicating that we are doing a reset, starting at a place of equilibrium, since at the beginning of creation, everything is balanced. We are born into this world completely naked and filled only with potential. At this period of new birth, neither the poor nor the wealthy may give less or more than a fixed amount in the middle, the one-half shekel. Because it is a time of new beginnings, let us pray that it represents the turning of a new page and a recalibration during this terrible time in the modern history of the Jewish people and the state of Israel. We always read this portion as a precursor to the reading of Parshat Zachor on the Shabbos before Purim, when we review the commandment to obliterate the perennial enemy, Amalek. Kliakar notes that the commandment to have correct weights and measures precedes the commandment of destroying Amalek as it appears in Sefer Devarim. The sages teach that the only way to successfully destroy Amalek is if we behave honestly in our weights and measures, making sure not to deceive or cheat others. People exploit and deceive others out of a desire to gain more for themselves. In the same vein, by donating the half shekel, the Jew conditions himself to more easily focus on charitable giving and remove the focus off of his own desire for gain. This is how we defeat Amalek, since Amalek represents a nation who deceive in order to take for themselves that which belongs to others. The altruism represented by the half shekel counters and defeats the greed and deception of Amalek. This is why the reading of Shkalim must always precede the reading of Zachor. I have tremendous pride and confidence in our shul community because of the selfless giving that has been taking place since October 7th, not only in our community but in Jewish communities worldwide. The people of Israel have demonstrated their selflessness again and again over these over 150 days through volunteering to fight, to feed, to harvest, to work, to donate, and to support. We mourn those who have made the ultimate sacrifice and pray for those who are still suffering in captivity and in hospitals. When fighting an enemy who spreads lies about our people, who seeks to deceive the world so that they can rapaciously take away that which belongs to our nation, this altruism is the best weapon that we can use. It is the weapon of the half shekel, of giving of ourselves in a way that shows just how different we are from Amalek. Amalek is a master of deception. He is the proverbial child who murders his parents and throws himself at the mercy of the court because he's an orphan. Hamas has killed its own people and then points the finger at Israel to lay blame for the genocide. Hamas has shown that its leadership base in Qatar is quite content to take all the donations sent by the international community for humanitarian aid and use it instead for terror tunnels and to line their pockets. As the, prof as the prophet Micha pronounced about the corrupt people of his time, Asher Ashireha Malau Hamas, their wealthy are filled with violence, the actual word Hamas. Its dwellers, Yoshveha Dibru Shaker, are filled with falsehood and a deceitful tongue is in their mouth. Now the war has come to our shores in peaceful Canada. I have been traveling quite a bit in the last several days. Last week, Tuesday, I went to Ottawa for the day with a group of about 25 rabbis from all over Canada. We lobbied our members of parliament to do the right thing regarding Israel. The current Canadian government has chosen to resume funding of UNRWA, another organization that is based on absolute sheker, falsehood. Sadly, even our own beloved Canada is acting with the same self-serving deceit by professing to support Israel while at the same time continuing to fund terrorism. It is why we as Jews must make our voices heard to our elected officials. This past week, I was at a conference in the United States where we heard from students at various universities, including Harvard, how presidents and leaders of the campuses are simply lying 
about caring about the Jewish populations. Students continue to live in fear and intimidation because the Jew haters know that they can get away with any behavior, be it tearing down posters of the hostages, ripping mezuzahs off dormitory doorposts, posting graffiti, calling Jewish students baby killers and the like. One student, an Orthodox Jew, related how he and a group of students are in the midst of litigation against the campus leadership for its continued spate of lies and failures. He expressed how Kafkaesque it is to expect treatment as an equal student with rights and then be ignored and ghosted at every turn. It is no surprise that the task force on anti-Semitism at Harvard now has had two of its co-chairs resign after concluding that the entire committee is a sham and a deception of people who pretend to care, but who at the same time have to appease their Qatari donors. We are living, dear friends, in turbulent times, and I fear that the turbulence will grow before it abates. This past Thursday, we had an incredible show of solidarity, something truly emboldening and encouraging for our community. But it was a countermeasure to an ever-growing brazenness of pro-Palestinian protesters who are spreading absolutely vile lies about Israel and about Jews in our own community. We no longer have the option of remaining on the sidelines. The war in Israel is at our doorstep, and we have been called for active duty. It is not just a war between good and evil. It is, in fact, a war between, between truth and falsehood. In an era of subjective truth, where everyone has their own narrative and feelings are more important than facts, it's important to remind ourselves and the world that on October 7th, a violent neighbor of Israel invaded the land, murdered over 1,200 innocent and peace-loving civilians, and took over 240 others as hostages. This is a fact that cannot be disputed or obscured. Now more than ever, we need to make sure that our shkalim, our weights and measures, are honest and correct. The way to defeat Amalek is through increased Torah and mitzvot, to be sure, but with an added emphasis on honesty with others and making sure that our pockets are free of ill-gotten gains. Our words must also be honest so that we don't get caught up in the same duplicitous tactics as our opponents. Ironically, the word sheker, the Hebrew word for falsehood, and shekel, the shekel coin, are very similar both in their root and in their morphology. The only difference between the letter resh of sheker and the letter lamed of shekel is that the lamed has a vertical line extending above. The only way to preserve our honesty is to stay connected vertically and keep our eyes focused toward Hashem in heaven. Our lives will thus be measured with honesty and equilibrium instead of being filled with deception. We look forward to a day when the spoken and written word will be restored to truth, as the prophet Zechariah reflects about the day when all our days of fasting are restored to days of rejoicing, ve'ha'emet ve'ha'shalom ehavu. On that day, mankind will once again embrace both truth and peace. May we see that day, dear friends. Bimheira, bi amenu, amen. Here's wishing you a beautiful Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom.